Hello and welcome back to Lord Fenton Gaming's Don't Panic series. I'm your host Lord Fenton. In today's Don't Panic series, we're going to be talking about Might and Magic 6, The Mandate of Heaven. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more uh, Don't Panic guys like this. And do not forget to hit the notification bell to update my videos and more. Now, Might and Magic 6, The Mandate of Heaven was released on April 30th, 1998. It's over 20 years old, but it is a wonderful uh, game experience. Now, in this Don't Panic video guide, I'm going to show everybody on character creation, what to do when you're first in the game, how to get some extra loot, and if you do all stick towards the end of this uh, video, I'll even show everybody a secret location where you can even get some more uh, loot. Yeah, this game is a computer role-playing game, first-person view. It's wonderful and neat. You explore cast spells, and much, much more. Let's get this guide started. Now, let's talk about the character creation in this uh, game. I'll go uh, through each stats, each of the classes, each of the skills, and more. Now, you will not get all the skills in the game. You will need to go out in the war world to explore it. First of all, let's talk about might. Now, might, that's how much uh, melee damage you could do in combat. More might, more harder you will hit. That's ideal for paladins. And I'll probably say uh, knights. Now intelligence, that means uh, more uh, mana you have, more powerful spells you could cast. That's ideal for druids and sorcerers. Personality, that's the same thing, but it's for clerics and druids. Also for paladins too. Same thing with intelligence for archers. Now endurance, more endurance you have, more hit points you have, longer you survive. Ideal for knights, paladin, or anything, anybody else up front. Accuracy means is more uh, accuracy, that means more you get to hit your foes. Higher accuracy, more chance you can land those blows. Speed means the quicker you are, more uh, turns it'll come up more often. So if you're fast, that is good. Last but not least, luck is based on resistance. How much you can resist spells, how much you can resist traps, and how lucky you are. Now these are your portraits right here you can select and that's your uh, class. Now first of all, knights, they do not cast magic at all, unfortunately. Good news is they are very strong and powerful and they can hit like a Mack truck. Now, clerics, on the other hand, they are your uh, caster favors that uh, could do healing magic, buffing magic, even do some uh, spirit and mind damage, which is good. They're a nice class, too. Now, sorcerers, they're your arcane casters that could cast four elements, and they're both devastating. Now, clerics and sorcerers could do light and dark magic. That I'll let everybody discover for themselves. Paladins, they're uh, cross between a knight and a cleric. They could heal some, and they could fight some. So they take it each from uh, both worlds on that. Next up is archers. They're like your fighters plus uh, sorcerers. They're more specialized in the uh, bow. However, they could cast some uh, sorcerer spells, which is actually uh, pretty good if you're looking for that. Paladins and archers cannot cast light and dark magic. Druids, last but not least, are crossed between clerics and sorcerers, so they take the best from both worlds on uh, that aspect. So that's the class system already in this game. Let me go over the basic skills in the game. Sword, that's your uh, how well you could use swords in the game. More so points in swords are better. More masteries in swords you get better. Three levels, there are normal, expert, and uh, master. There's also daggers, axe, spears, bows, and staffs. Those are like your melee weapons. My advice is, I'll probably say go with swords, axe, or spears. They're your good front line uh, for your knights, archers, and paladins. Daggers, I say go for uh, your arcane caster and maces. Go for your clerics. Probably druids too. Now, my advice is if you see bow, pick them out. Also, shields. You can equip the other hand with a shield. Gives you more armor class if you want to go uh, that route too. Shields are not bad at all. I prefer dual wielding. Now, your armor is uh, leather, chain, and plate. You will not learn plate. You need to go find out the skill sets on that. Leather allows you to wear leather type of armor, chain, chain type of armor. Body building gives you more hit points. More hit points you have, more you survive on the field. Perception, it detects traps. It spots hidden objects too and secret doors. Now this arm traps, well, it disarms traps that are in chests. Yes, this game traps can kill. Just trust me. It's like Dungeons and Dragons, everyone. Traps could kill. Now next up, let me go to the, uh, let's see here. Archer, identify item, that means uh, more uh, points you have that, better chance you can identify an item that's unidentified, saves you money for shops, just trust me. 
Now, diplomacy it means uh, more diplomatic you are, more likely you'll be able to hire hirelings. It's not that useful skill, just trust me, it's one of the dump skills. Now, next up, we're going to talk about the cleric's uh, magic skills, including druids. Body magic basically heals your uh, body, and also body resistance, and sometimes body damage magic, too. Spirit heals your spirits, and also um, spirit, spirit resistance. Now, mind magic attacks the mind, also mind resistance. That's great for uh, clerics. Also, repair, that means you get to repair items. If it's busted, you can repair it yourself. Meditation, more meditation points you have, more magic points you have, it means you cast magic more often. Especially useful for clerics, sorcerers, druids, archers, and paladins. More useful for clerics and sorcerers, just trust me. And uh, staffs, were already explained before. Yeah, that's another one of those melee weapons. So let's go to the next part. Now, next up, we're going to do with is the, the uh, sorcerer's uh, spells, which also works for druids and archers. It is fire, air, water, and earth. Air magic deals with flight and uh, damage. Fire deals with damage, of course, and also haste and more. Water deals with uh, teleportation, water walk, and some water damage. And earth deals with earth damage and shielding. Now, here's um, my advice on that. If you want to start out with a sorcerer, I would say probably. Uh, to uh, fire, air, and water. Rush water and air ASAP to mastery. Now let's go with stat allocation. Now when you create a party, go with the default of Paladin, Archer, Cleric, and Sorcerer, or better yet, Knight, Archer, Cleric, and Sorcerer. Those are your default classes right there. You should start out with those. Now if you're expert, then do Knight, Druid, Cleric, and Sorcerer, or some people's favorites on the board is uh, Druid, Cleric, Sorcerer, Sorcerer, harder to start. But start whatever you feel like. I would do the default party and just name your characters. Right there I'm showing you a selection of uh, portraits. Don't mind the names, I was a bit goofy. But still you select what they uh, look like in their speech and more. This game, I'm going to be honest, has a nice uh, refreshment of portraits. Possibly the best looking portraits out of 6, 7, and 8. Yeah, the developers took a whole bunch of time and love back in the day, which is great. I mean, this is like one of those games you should bask in and enjoy. So now for stats, give everybody at least 12 points of allocation. Now, I'll probably say for Knights and Paladins, just do like I'm doing. Maybe except for a little bit less uh, Might Endurance and put more into uh, Personality since they are casting Cleric spells after all. Still put enough in Accuracy and Speed. This is how I'm building my Knight right here. So take a look at that. Points for uh, Might for more damage. Endurance for more hit points actually speed to get more into action. Now, Druids, on the other hand, uh, guess what? You will have to uh, do is, is um, actually uh, balance things out between intelligence and personality because you can be casting more trees like that. Again, 12 points for all characters except for the Sorcerer. They get the uh, special 14 points. I'm doing intelligence, personality, and speed. Not much accuracy because, let's be honest, I am not going to be using uh, a little bit of bows and arrows much. Instead, I'm going to try to get more uh, turns into it. Now next up I'm doing is uh, clerics, of course I'm switching out portraits, yeah there we go, and that's fine right there, I could have just had that one lady on the right but nah, they all look like twins, I don't want twins. So clerics next, while I'm naming the character, I'm going to probably say it's personality, probably speed and endurance, yeah we'll uh, get more points into that personality, so this way her uh, cleric spells are much more uh, potent and powerful. Seriously, we're almost at the uh, cap, of course. And of course, I'm just going to do is uh, split this out. I probably should have did endurance, but I think I'm fine right here. And again, uh, black potions later on in the game will give you uh, stats. Look out for those. Last but not least is the sorcerer class. What we're going to do is just name it. Now, if anybody knows what the name of that character is from a certain game, please say so on the board. Pump up intelligence. Definitely pump up some endurance and speed. Let's wait a little bit fast. And okay, ooh, okay, I made a mistake. Let's not be personality. Yes, yeah, so you can also go negative stats if you want to, if you want to min and uh, max. For now, just uh, just do what I'm doing. You'll do uh, fine. So let me give some final advice. Knights, you definitely want bows. Same thing with paladins and uh, archers or anybody who can get that at the beginning. Now, my knight, I want disarm traps. I can disarm traps right away. Same thing with, uh, what you call it, archers give them the air skill, which is good. Paladins give them the body magic. Clerics give them all three magics. Now, druids, I probably did with earth. 
your force with that, body and water. Sorcerers, fire, air, and uh, water. My final advice for character creation, go what you feel like. Again, if you do not like what you start in the first hour or two, go back to the drawing board and pick better classes and setups. Other than that, just have fun and play the game and just explore. That's what this game's all about, it's exploration and uh, fun. Let's talk about the save system. I'm always going to be talking about the save system. Save often, save early, save whenever you can. If you're stuck at a dungeon, well, that save might save you. If you didn't save, you lose precious hours. So right here, go do the escape button, hit the save system, type anything what you want. Don't panic for instance, and there. That's real easy to save the game. It's real simple and easy. Abuse the save system. Just trust me, there are some tips and tricks I'll show later on on the uh, save system. So let's get to the next section of the video. Now the next lesson in the video is user interface aka UI and of course the inventory system. Now real quick inventory system is like a paper doll system where you drag items on your characters, equip them, and that's very simple. Now the UI system is very neat it sounds complicated, it's not. Now this section right here I'm showing is your uh, stats. One side is your current, the other side is your buff or debuff. So just be careful on uh, certain aspects of the game. That's your hit points right here, your current and your uh, maximum. Same thing with spell points, same thing with armor class right here. Condition, that means if you're poison, curse, insane, or weakened, or good. If you're good, you want good. Quick spell slots, that's where it is right here. Now aging in the game. Much, much older you are, less damage you're going to do, etc, etc. So you want to keep your age uh, normal. That's your level right here, and this is your experience toll until your next level to go to a trainer, more on that. This is your attack bonuses right here, including skills, spells, accuracy, etc. This is your damage from certain weapons, and you might score too. Same thing with your shoot, including accuracy boosts that too. And there's your resistance right here. That's where your elemental resistance are at. Bottom of the screen is your paper dolls. Now this is your skill uh, area right here. When you uh, get your skill points from leveling, that's where you put it in. This is your paper doll. Very simple, easy to use. Drag the item you see right here. Equip the character. And that is uh, simple. We're going to do that. You can also right click and inspect it. See? Inspects the item. Same thing with monsters. Just remember that. There you go. And there's your ring right here. We got lucky because we created a new character. So we get ring. So open the magnifying glass. Put that there. And that's it. Just remember to repair often. Now these are your rewards right here for class promotions, quests complete, or certain tasks is, uh, done. And that's it for the uh, inventory screen and the rewards. And this is how you select your characters too. Now next up we're going to go with current quests. This will tell you what quests you are on, including side quests. This game you need to track things on your own from uh, story and side quests. That's why you save often early. And this is your auto notes right here where you find that's your potions, whatever you discover from alchemy, fountains you found, obelisks you find in the game. You definitely want to look for those. Seer notes you would definitely want to listen to. And that's your miscellaneous section, including trainers. And this is where uh, you're at on the uh, map. You can zoom in, zoom out where you're at your location. We can't move for now because this is a small zone. Bigger areas, you'll be able to uh, do that, including dungeons too. And right here is your uh, time of day. This is very important to track because there's some, some quests that will actually you have to be precise with it. Especially the Druid promotion quest. One of them we got to be on Equinox. You'll discover that when you play this game actually. And this is your spells right here. You need to do is just simply click your character. Let me demonstrate that. We'll do needles. Go through that. And you're thinking, okay, we do not have enough spells. How do I learn spells in this game? You're asking. Well, that is a uh, very simple. Go to your inventory, look for the spell book right here. Click on it. Yeah, see that's cold beam. Right click the character here okay. on there and he learned it. Just got to keep on doing it on the yes. uh, portrait and he yes. just learned some spells already. Same thing yes. with your cleric, okay. your sorcerer, yes. your archer and paladin. Your okay. knight don't get jack in spells. Okay. He's not a caster. Okay. There you go. Now that set is done. So we got enough spells. We're going to set them up. You want your quick spells. So this way you hit the S key on your uh, computer. It's this way you automatically uh, shoot spells out. Select the spell. Hit the quick button. Now everybody has it. I'm going to repeat this uh, two more uh, times. 
Again, this is my cleric. I'm going to do a heal spell. Select that one time. Okay. Click on that. She has learned a quick slot so she can heal quickly in battle. Same thing with uh, your sorcerer or any other uh, casting class. Select static charge. Really good spell. Click that. Hit the quick spell slot. And there you go. Everybody's set for that. And this is your rest. This is very important. Right there is your apple. That's your food supply. You run out of food supply. You go on for days while you're resting, uh, you'll get weakened and eventually insane. When you get insane, party members kill each other during resting. Same thing when you travel, it consumes food, so you need to be careful. Also resting, you can wait till dawn, wait an hour, wait five minutes. This game has timing precise on some quests, so... Again, save early, save often when you all uh, do that, which is very important. So we're going to exit the uh, resting sc uh, screen after I uh, point out one more time the uh, wait periods. So my final advice on rest is just plan ahead. And yeah, you cannot rest when there are enemies nearby. And right here, this is your basic screen right here. It tells you what quick spells you have, what your current stats, AC, reputation, and uh, more. You want good reputation or bad reputation. There's a uh, magic that's linked to uh, that. And this is your menu right here where you save, adjust your auto, controls, and uh, much, much uh, more. And that's it for the uh, UI inventory screen. Really easy to use and it's very uh, simplistic. Now let's talk about the shop system in the game. Good news is there's unlimited economy. And yes, shops will refill their items either once or twice a week which is really good. So you go in the shop, select what you want, select the character you want, select the item you want. For instance, we're going to do our druid. He's going to buy all the alchemy items. That'll be for later on in this uh, video. There you go. That's how you buy items in the game. Same thing with selling. Go over there. Now, certain shops will take certain items, like this shop right here will take uh, jewelry, certain magical items, and uh, certain uh, clothing. They will not take weapons and armor. They'll definitely take spell books in this shop. So you got to go in those types. Now, identify items means if it's a green item, you need to identify it. Once you hit that item, it'll cost money when they identify it. So be careful with your money when you identify items. That's why identify items is important for uh, some people who want to go that route. Repair means you get to repair items. Red items are red. I'm you repair them. Finally, special. You get special items you can only find in the, in the special section. For instance, I got the wizard eye. I'm going to about to uh, buy for demonstration purposes only. There you go. Buy ourselves our first uh, special item from the shop. Now, unfortunately, I believe she already learned wizard eye. By the way, that is a good spell to use, so cast that often, you'll see uh, dots on the map. You won't see in this Let's Play, because I'm just demonstrating everything else that's more important. So, let's go over here. Next part, we're going to show right here, this is where you get your uh, weapons to uh, buy and sell to. Yes, shops are particular about what you buy and sell. This is your armor, so the same thing, buy and sell. That's very important. Now, I'm going to go over here, show one of the magic shops, and I'll show you what happens there. So now we're going to one of the uh, Magic Guild shops. This is the elemental one with the wavy uh, lines. Now we're going to go in there and there's one uh, problem. We're going to need to become a membership of the uh, guild. So you go for, look for a building right here in the house. Member of self-help, that's for clerics. That means you get to buy uh, cleric shops right there. Now we're going to try and look for the elemental one. We're going to do that too. There's your elemental guild membership. They cost 100 pieces of gold each. Same thing with light, dark, or any of the uh, trainer ones too. So I'm showing sure everybody a cheap trick on actually uh, how to uh, control the inventory in the shops. Now you want to make a save right here. We're going to call this uh, shop abuse. There you go. We're going to go inside a shop. Now every time you save or load a game, your shop items are different. So for instance, we're going to show right here that's the spark spell in uh, the uh, first row, right? The first spell, and on the uh, second row down here is the deadly swarm. You can use this to control wherever you want, so we're going to load the game. I'm going to show you why you should do this. There you go, I loaded it up. Body spells again. Same thing, poison spray, that's different, and static charge. See, that's how you abuse the shop system in the game, by saving and loading until you get what you uh, need. It's very important to learn this. Now, let's talk about the alchemy system in the game and how you could exactly abuse this system well. Now, first of all, you're going to need an empty potion bottle and these uh, three flowers. There's yellow, red, and uh, blue. Including yellow, red, and blue components. There's also, I believe, gray components that will uh, boost up your, uh, what do you call it, the uh, alchemy potions to a certain uh, number. So if there's like one right here and you get a gray component, 
that's 10, then it'll boost it up big time. See, that's how we make a magic potion right here. Just combine the blue with the empty bottle. Let's do it with the red too. So we go right here. That's the same thing. Now I'm going to show everybody a combination. What happens if we combine uh, red and uh, blue together? That makes purple. That is cure poison. You could also uh, put the yellow flower in there too. We'll demonstrate that. And there's a whole bunch of combinations you get to mix around too. So just experiment. This game's all about experimentation with alchemy. So take advantage of it because we uh, mix our potions like that for the first time. It's also in the auto notes so you have that for memory. Now I'm giving everybody the basic combinations. Health potions equals red plus empty bottle. That's red plants. Magic potions blue plus empty uh, bottle. Energy potions yellow plus empty armor orange is health plus energy resistance is uh, magic plus energy and cure poison is health plus magic we did in the might and magic 6 game there's henchmen now henchmen will uh, give you certain spells to use give you uh, benefits like uh, you find more gold you gain more experience points and uh, more it's very simple. Talk to a villager right here. Look for the uh, join button. We're talking to Lily the Water Master. Her information is she'll uh, for a thousand pieces of gold to start and 10% of your gold that you find. She gets to cast Water Walk for a duration of three hours once per day. Like I said before, she'll take 10% of your uh, gold from here on out as long as she's in your party that you uh, find. My advice on that is, is look for bankers. They'll nullify that. I'll explain more on that. Right click the mouse, look for certain henchmen you want. Greetings. And this one right here, we have to beg, threaten, or bribe. We're going to go with the old threat route. Now she's threatened. And she will uh, teach us how to uh, earn more experience points. 10% bonus to all experience earned. She takes 3% of your gold. You can hire her and that's it too. So my advice is uh, look for bankers, more gold. Cost a thousand, however, uh, that 10% uh, gold they'll uh, get, they'll get 10%. You get more gold, just trust me. And it's like OP'd. Also, like I said before, look for the town poor ones as good too. And that's it for the henchman lessons. Now, next up is skill trainers, leveling, and skills you can get from uh, certain uh, shops or uh, places. Now, Buccaneer's Lair is closed and we need it at night and we need a Buccaneer's membership. Now this building right here is if you have four points in fire magic, save on a sorcerer, he'll learn you that, but it'll cost you 1,000 gold pieces. You want to look for those all over the world and put notes on it for uh, mental use or use the internet. Same thing with earth right here. That's how you uh, get skill trainers to uh, boost up your uh, skills besides leveling up your skills. Right here is your trainer. Every time you level up, you need to visit a trainer. Now here's the thing about trainers in this uh, game that's very important. They are limited. That's right, they are really limited. And I'm going through right now, I just found the spirit and uh, mind expert. So when you get those skills to 4 via leveling, you get skill points every time you level to put skills in. So now, right here, because we're not a member of the blade skill, we cannot learn anything else from there. That's where you learned your skills too, is the, uh, that and also shops too, such as the uh, elemental shops and the... Uh, Cleric shops like the spirit shops, body shops, and uh, more. So my final advice on skills, trainers, and training, plan ahead, that's all. And make sure you have plenty of money too because you're going to need uh, cash. This game, you definitely want to invest in the merchant skill. It would be a good way to get some money because of the uh, merchant skill in the uh, game. Well, that's it for this part of the guide. Let's talk about the next part of the uh, video guide. Now let's talk about the combat system in the game. There are two types of ways you could do combat. Number one is real time. That means enemies will come close to you while you have a set of turns. And you have to be real quick on the draw between A, your attack, and S, your uh, quick slot. Now I did was I paused it with the ender button that is turn based. That means you have a set amount of turns so does the enemy to uh, move. This is the way you should do this. It might take longer for combat however it's a win-win situation. Now there's a cheesing method later on with air magic. Once you get flight, cast flight up in the air, go turn base, and then look down your enemies while in turn base. Why is that? They're hard to reach you unless they're range or uh, casters. Also when you click the star, that's you can click your spells right here. We're going to do spirit arrow for the cleric because she's going to need to do some of that. 
So what I'm going to do right now is demonstrate uh, combat and one more uh, tip, if enemies are uh, near you, hit the A button for your melee to get in range. And your cleric, if, they're, if they heal someone and get in trouble, that's why you hot spell uh, healing magic for your uh, cleric or your healer. So I'm going to let this go on. Now I'm going to do is I'm just going to go uh, real time then switch to turn base to finish them off. Once you uh, finish off enemies then go uh, collect your items and get out of uh, turn base mode. Yeah you can move in turn base mode too I recommend against that. So because we clear out the enemies by a bridge we found another set of newbie items to uh, grab. Unfortunately none of my characters have identified items. Now for uh, combat where the enemies uh, lie, you can get pick most of their stuff up except for water. If it's in the water, it's gone for good. Same thing with lava in this uh, game here. So we're going to clean everything up. Definitely use the flight spell if there's loot on the uh, hills you cannot reach. Very simple. Use your mouse and then uh, click on the body and there's your loot. And that's combat in a nutshell including looting too and how to uh, abuse it by using the uh, turn-based system in the game. So I'm going to get to the next part of this uh, video. Now the next part of the video is we're going to show you some new player items. Now first part I'm picking up these apple trees giving me some free food. Now if I remember right the apples will respawn six months in game time to a year maybe two years plus. Take advantage of that fully so you get some free food. Now second right here is your horseshoes. They'll give you a skill point. So you grab a horseshoe. We're going to demonstrate this now. So what I'm going to do right now is go there for the inventory. Now fountains they'll give you uh, buffs which will heal some items and more. So now next part is I'm going to show everybody some more chests including uh, barrels. There will be enemies up ahead. I'm going to return afterwards. So I looted up the chest. We got some free loot already. So that's good. So already we're uh, making a lot of bank in this game whole lot of bank. Now barrels you want to pick up they refill from six months to a year plus and uh, there's a different type of barrel colors and more orange is intelligence luck and speed. We just uh, again uh, please consult your uh, notes because they will tell you on that and uh, me I didn't right click these enemies there but we're uh, way too weak probably should be level uh, three or uh, four. So now the next portion of the video we're going to talk about is the end. There's a quest inside the end that you got from the start of the game, which is a note. That's where you want to go to. We're going to learn about the rest system real quick. So this one right here just tell you information. Now this guy right here, you hit the uh, quest and the uh, letter, and you got yourself a thousand gold. You already got some starting money. He gives you another quest too, which is the main story. And there's your end. You can uh, get your tips, drink, fill your pack, and rest. Resting will be to the next day, so if you need to go to a night shop, you need to wait and more. Now, really quick, this uh, part of the video, you could die a lot. You have to abuse the save system. If you're unsure about it, please use my timestamps. Skip ahead towards the final tips. Now, this is towards the uh, secret uh, dungeon and game, the developer's room, and how to uh, get to it. And also how to get found one the obelisk in a very dangerous area, which is late game. So first thing you do, there's this building right here. Just use your mouse to click right there. There's your flight scroll. And now when you fly, that's page up to go up and insert go down once you learn the uh, flight scroll to go use it. Fly where I am at. Click this wall right here. And once you do, quickly go over here. Click the wall. You're inside the developer's dungeon. Now here's my advice on all this. Go explore it. Just trust me. There's plenty of options of loot, treasure, and uh, more. I'm going to be uh, right back after it's uh, done for the uh, how to get out of there. Now, after doing all that looting and more and fighting uh, some foes, this is how you get out. Quickly go out. If you haven't touched the obelisk, do so now on every character. Follow the way I am going to get out. Just follow the direction exactly. Go over here. Turn around. 
Look for this part, click the wall, and you are out. Now, any of your characters are unconscious, you could definitely go to the end and uh, rest it off. That is how you uh, do the developer's uh, dungeon and get some extra loot and at least 10,000 gold of uh, starting money so you could buy and sell stuff. So let's get to the final tips. Here are some uh, final tips from me. Anytime there's new items such as uh, leather, armor, weapons that are better, equip them. When you see spell books that are new, definitely you want to learn them ASAP. As for uh, magic, you want to go for light and dark. Light is positive reputation in order to get master, and dark is negative reputation. I'll let you all figure that out on your own. Abuse the save system. Just trust me, you want to abuse that. When you level your uh, characters up, you want to go to a trainer until they cannot level up, then go to another town that will be able to uh, do that. And there's uh, one town, one area that's unlimited leveling afterwards that's uh, 50 and beyond. Now, goblins here, you want to take care of those that's near this town, including the tower, grab all the quests. Memorize all the skill trainers, grab all the skills you want to do, plan accordingly on your characters. That's very important. That's playing. Drink from fountains, including the one I just briefly shown, because you're going to need that for uh, Town Portal. You want to learn Town Portal, that's the water magic. Flight for uh, air, and then Lloyd's Beacon. That's very important, too. Other than that, enjoy yourself and have fun with this game. There's so much exploration in this game. Just explore and let yourself loose. Well, that's it for my Don't Panic, Might and Magic, The Mandate of Heaven new player video guide. This is Lord Fenton signing off. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day or night.